thoughts on, this, on what's transpired today in the last, last week, I guess? Well, we came um, off the break and, and for a couple of days did some running. Coaches went and looked at a couple of schools, watched some practice. Had a, good, had a really good practice Thursday and Saturday. Then scrimmage, a lot of spring Saturdays showing scrimmages. And because it was practice too, we just try you know, kind of get them back in the mode of hitting and communicating and learning the schemes. Had very, very long practices. Today wasn't quite as long. Um, a little bit a little bit of full go work. Um, we'll take tomorrow as a good teaching day. Uh, we're lifting actually on the heavy practice day with heavy lifting and trying to finish up right now with a good lift on the back end to try to finish strong. Thursday's practice, so we're going to make Thursday a little bit more of a teaching day, uh, maybe and probably very little or minimal contact, and then kind of a good go Saturday. So with the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we're trying to make today like a, you know a good, for the most part, you know, tackling, physical, blocking, uh, padded day. We'll make Thursday a little bit more of a teaching, throwing, uh, perimeter, not not as much contact, and then we'll use Saturday. Um, this Saturday will be our first real scrimmage. We've done some tackling and 11 on 11 in situations, but this will, this will be a scrimmage. And we'll do that the following week, and then we'll wrap it up with the spring game. So uh, pretty good go. The guys are very much back into it. Uh, both Saturday was better than Thursday. Had some rust tennis Thursday. Saturday was good. Really good go today. So this was practice seven. So we're basically at the midpoint of spring ball. What do you see in terms of the, the quarterback situation? What's, what's shaping up there? I know it's still early. Yeah, it's early. I mean, we're trying to. Um, you know, did a little bit more today with uh, um, uh, Danny and, and, and uh, Richard Lego getting the bulk of the work. Uh, I, 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 I like Donovan and, and Austin, but as young guys, I just don't know if they're putting the time in they need to. And there's certain things we can't make them do. But it's kind of like you know you, you know that library is open. And a lot of guys go over and study, and some guys go home. And you know as a quarterback, you got you got to get up to speed. And if we keep watering down the reps a lot, it, it kind of waters down our development. So. Uh, Based on what we've seen, and it's just more from command presence and, and what's going on right now, those, those guys got the bulk of the work. That's the first day that's happened. And it was just kind of my decisions practice. Went like, hey, you got the ones, you got the twos. They went back and forth. They're inconsistent. Uh, our defense is really doing a nice job and and giving them some different looks that they're getting, they're uncomfortable with. And that being said, they, they sometimes uh, will make some plays, but very easily they're getting out of rhythm. And you know, when you're practicing, you're on and off and on and off. So. Uh, that position needs to get better, um, and uh, it's not by we're not discouraged or disappointed, but it does need to get better. You know, we had a recruit here this week, and I know some guys said, "Well, you must not like our coach." No, uh, but we didn't even offer that recruit yet, so you, know, you can't. You know, everybody, everybody, you know, just everybody speculates. Right now, uh, right now we're practicing. And quarterbacks need to get better. I like them, but they need to get better. Richard can throw it. Danny's got good command presence, and I think the talent of of uh, Austin King, Donovan Hill is going to be really good. You know, Sanders having mixed with his injury right now. Uh, but from what I've seen in six practices right now, those other two kind of deserve some work. If the young guys don't pick it up, I, we got to start moving a little bit. Uh, being fair is one thing, but we can be so fair it actually hurts the team. There's a point in time where you got to make some decisions and get moving. We got we got to calculate that right too. So. Do you want to at the end of spring practice? Uh, have a clear starting quarterback, or is it going to be a little more of a here's where the depth chart is at this point going into fall ball kind of thing? Um, I don't know. I'm not like in a hurry. Like, I think we have to have one. Uh, it'd be nice to have one. Uh, and we need more than one. I mean, there's been, like, for example, this past year, you know, I mean, you look at, 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 at most teams in most years, uh, like, in, in, you know, Nate got sacked the fewest in the conference this year. He only got sacked nine times himself. And we have the most plays and the most passing yards for the fewest sacks. At the same time, he didn't make it through the year. And, you know, you go through the year before, he didn't make it through the year. So to me, we need more than one. Even though we need a starter, we need two that we can win with, if not three. We're going to keep developing hard. I really like Austin and I like Donovan Hill and their talent. We've got to keep developing. But we got to have two we can win with. And we'll see. And whichever one's the best can be the one. But we need two we can win with. And right now, you know, Danny's, Danny, Danny's been very, very confident. Because, again, he's just got a lot more time on task. Richard shows some things. But, again, he's... He's also, there's, a, there's enough thinking and moving parts. He's not as good as he needs to be. So um, we're just gonna keep pushing him and keep working. And uh, fortunately for them, they, you know, a couple years ago uh, when uh, Sudfield got injured, we also were very marginal at receiver that year. We had lost Bolser and Kofi Hughes and Latimer. We were young and we were smaller. It's shame when playing outside. We were really searching for receivers. We do have some, some really good supporting cast. 
for the quarterback. So uh, hopefully we can just keep bringing those guys along. You know, I know, I know it's, it's definitely right now definitely a drop off from senior to a guy that hasn't played. That's normal, but he's got some good supporting cast. If we can coach and get him right, we'll, 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 we'll be okay with that. How does Devine kind of approach this spring? Did he get a little bit of momentum presenting the season like he did? Yeah, and I think Coach McCullough's trying to be very uh, uh, smart with him. Like he's got a lot of uh, one of one of our off the field uh, personnel guys made the other day thought probably Divine has maybe matured. His comment yesterday was, "We're just talking about a lot of players." He goes, "Divine's probably matured and grown as much as anyone he's seen from just how he carries himself in the academic center, and off the field, and just confidence in himself. And not that he was ever bad, but just so much more outgoing and got a great personality. So he's doing a great job. Uh, he's doing some special team work and." Coach McCullough does a, a tremendous job of not overworking those guys. With Majette back there, um, you know, in the situation we're playing, I uh, made the comment today, we're playing Williams and um, uh, Kemion Patrick, a lot of running back. And we're playing uh, Ricky Brookins, who's really a quality running back, summit receiver. Those three guys we're trying to get, and Mike Majette could be dual role guys. They could, I don't know if, if Devon Redding is a running back playing receiver, but I think sometimes Majette and Kemion and Ricky Brookins and those guys. So they're playing some different spots, but it's not like position moves. We're just trying to enhance their 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 growth as, 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 as being a little bit more complete and giving us more options. Coach, is that, is but Devon's been well, done really well. Very, very good. One of our best leaders of the team. In, in regards to, to Brookings, Hamion, and, and Williams, is that the kind of roster flexibility you're trying to recruit, recruit now, guys who could play multiple positions? Well, you know, I had a coach ask me today, like, why don't we play um, – as many tight ends as we used to when I was at Oklahoma years ago, but there was one year where, with a kid named Gresham and Matt Clapper, strength coach here, and Brody Elridge, that we had a bunch of big body guys, and Joe John Finley who's coaching at Missouri now, and we had a lot of tight ends. Well, recruiting all of a sudden, a couple years later, it wasn't the same group. Uh, if you've got personnel that can go from running back to receiver, or from tight end to receiver, or from tight end to fullback, and you can move guys around, with the no huddle, you can give defense different looks without substitute. If you have to substitute and put in little guys to throw the ball and big guys to run the ball, you, you kind of show your cards. So if your personnel gives you that flexibility as a coach, you like to use that. And all we're doing right now is just trying to see how flexible we can get Ricky Brookins and Camion and Divine. It might just have to be because they're really good runners, but they also have a skill set maybe to play in the perimeter side. Now we're not even doing that part of the package yet. We're just trying to develop them in different roles. And as we get through the summer and, and preseason and game plan, we'll see. And maybe it goes nowhere. Maybe it gets squandered, and you don't see them a whole lot. But if they keep coming along, they just give you flexibility to do different things. Kevin, how's the defense coming in, in, in Tom Allen's system and, and termin terminology and all those kinds of things? You know, one, I think, um, I'm just talking to a, a parent inside. Um, you know, he's got he got a lot of energy. But I think the, the more than anything, he's just got some things that he believes in and he wants to coach those things and he believes in those things. And that being said, there's a lot of confidence in what he wants to do and there's, he's not trying to do a whole lot. He knows like, hey, if they do this, here's my answers, here's what I want to do. And so he's not put in a lot right now. Uh, I think we think the less we do, the harder we'll play. We can always add plays, but we wanted, uh, the first two days we went helmets, we did not go against each other because we fell down pads. If we went against each other, we wouldn't go hard enough and we would start the culture of not playing hard. So we've tried to do a lot of things to in increase just awareness of what's going on, confidence. We can always add schemes. So right now, he's not doing a lot. He's trying to get those guys playing fast and running to the ball. They've had a couple really good days. I was, you know, again, we've got a lot of things to clean up. We've got a lot of competition. Uh, our D-line needs to keep coming along. Mark Hagan's doing a great job there. There is some young and some maturity. The linebacker and back end seems to be getting better. And we think they go against some good receivers and pass games. So we got to keep bringing that along. But, uh, I like what I see and very encouraged. I'm glad he's here. Kevin, you're right at the midpoint of spring ball. What's maybe one area that has surprised you and been better? And what's maybe one area that stands out as far as something you need to shore up between now and the fall? Well, when you say what's been better, um, to me what's been better is that I think we're practicing with a lot of energy. We're not going through the motions as, as a team. And we're competing and, and playing kind of physical against each other. You know, we're putting pads on each other. We're doing it in, a, I think, a clean, physical way, uh, because sometimes you can take some shots where, you know, you 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 can you can take some guys out not meaning to and still be legal hits. But you know, we're trying to be physical, um, and I think the way they're approaching practice, the way they're approaching the weight room, there's there's the thing I'm most pleased with is we have consistent energy, and the guys are into practice, and they like being around here. They like going against each other, uh, and my concern would be, do we have the leadership and the 
in the direction to just continue that because there's a point in time where you kind of could gloss over and start going through the motions. I think, I mean, uh, it took us maybe uh, through Thursday to kind of get back, come off spring break. The winter, they bought in Coach Kate and had a great winter. That led in, I thought the first week of spring was awesome. I didn't come off a of spring break. We need about four or five days, but I really loved what I saw Saturday, yesterday, and today. And uh, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing. I just hope they can just keep it going because that's what good teams do. They just keep chipping good days, and keep getting better, and keep it, it's incremental improvement. And I like that. I'm encouraged by that. And it'll be challenging to see, but it's, it's not coach speak. Just good teams just kind of love practicing and love working and keep doing it. I think our coaches are into it. I think the kids are buying it. We'll see if we can keep that going. You mentioned it a little bit, but just how do you see Coach Hagan gelling with that D-line group? Uh, you know, one, he's just you know, he's coached it for a long, long time, and several schools have been successful. So he's got some some things he believes in. He's pretty confident in it. He's pretty assertive in it, and it's pretty consistent. Hey, here's what I want to see. Here's our drill work. Here's my coaching points. I think he's kind of gelled quickly with Coach Allen. I think philosophically, some things Coach Allen wants the D-line to do fits Coach Hagan's background. They had never worked together, so I think by by luck, there's you know there's lots of different philosophical styles of 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 drills and attitude and energy. I think they're very compatible, very comparable, and that's great because they have not been together. And and that being said, Mark being a veteran coach, and I think being on Coach Allen's page is giving Coach Allen the, the flexibility, to keep his eyes on the back end, and really help tie the secondary and linebackers to the front. And that's how we're working that right now. Is Coach, from a mentality standpoint, did the bowl game help this team's confidence? Do you see a different type of attitude coming into the spring than you saw previously? Um, I don't know if the bowl game or just maybe go as we went through the last year, year or so. We've, you know, we've kind of, um, we're getting there. Uh, at the same time, though, um, we've been a team that when we're hot, we're pretty good. And when we're cold, we can lose confidence. So. The ability that we're going to get in the mouth, we're going to have some things not go away. We're going to have some injuries. We're going to have some just some bad. You name it. There's there's some things you know through through your progression of the year and through the season. Yet you, you know where you're going to get punched a little bit. And you know I thought again you know, I thought we saw a great deal you know just from afar and not really talking to Coach Cream but just observing the basketball team. And you look at a lot of things they went through. Yet with great leadership with Yogi and at five seniors, a lot of those old guys and with, with Coach and then the young guys embracing it. How they kind of battled and weathered through and. You know, to win the conference by, by two games, and you know, you get your rivals a couple times, and it wasn't easy. They had injuries, and they had some, you know, they got punched a couple times. They got gut shot, but they kept playing, and you know, that's gonna happen for us. And I don't know when, uh, but 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 we're, we're gonna have a few of those things. So um, there's more confidence with the team, yeah. But uh, my deal is, can we keep it when 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 the wind gets knocked out of your sails? That's gonna happen once in a while. And good teams, and good players, and good programs can overcome that. Anything else? And then uh, last, now it's not a big deal. We'll get, I guess I'll put a statement there, but we, 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 in our staff, we did have, have an addition, one of our off the field coaches, Messingham, you know, took a job. Courtney, who's a great golfer, by the way. Yeah. Had eight birdies out there one day. Had three bogeys in shot 67. That's hard to do. Ooh. Yeah, I always had him as my partner. <laughs> Courtney took a job at Montana State, and that's an off the field role, and it's an offensive role because we have four coaches on offense, myself being the fifth one. Coach Allen's kind of run the defense of four guys. So that's been, been a good, good good deal. And we've been able to hire a guy that I worked with for years ago. Uh, and a lot of times these roles are going to be six month, one year jobs. We're not, you know, they're not, we're not paying as much. But, you know, the way the game's going, everybody's hiring all the off the field guys. We're bringing a guy in here. He started uh, past week. Uh, his name's Sean Watson. He worked with me at Miami of Ohio years ago. He was the head coach at Southern Illinois. He is uh, most recently was the offense coordinator at Texas. Before that, he was the offense coordinator at Louisville, coaching Teddy Bridgewater with Charlie. Before that, he was at Nebraska. Uh, with Bo Pelini and Coach Callahan for that's in Colorado. So we go back years. He's a quarterback winning guy. He's an off the field. But that's a good quality hire. And I'll put out a statement about that that you maybe could maybe add that. And we'll get something with Jeff here. And maybe you could add that before you pop that out there with yourself. But uh, that was official last week. And we're excited to have Sean. And uh, then the other thing, uh, Billy Kosh has now been officially hired as our offensive quarterback or our offensive GA. Um, Matt Sims was our at that position last year, took a job at South Carolina. Billy's dad, Chris Koch, has coached about 30 years. I think right now he's at, I don't know where Chris is. He's been in South Carolina, he's at Richmond. He's been in South Carolina, Kansas State, coach in Notre Dame. He's been in a lot, a lot of places. Uh, so that's a coach's kid. So we've added two off the our GA, Billy Koch, and yeah, C-O-S-H, and then Sean Watson, two off the field hires we've gotten. This day and age, a lot of guys were adding those support roles and with the support administration, we've been able to do a few of those things. That's pretty good for us. What, what challenge role? 
Uh, it's our offensive quality control. It's, it all, it's, the, it's the coaches that can do everything except coach the kids. So you can be a part of game plan, you can be a part of studying, you can you can help, but you can't physically instruct the kids. So it's that, uh, you have the, and you, you can't recruit off campus, but that's uh, no different than what Messingham's done and, and all that. So we're excited to have those guys with us, okay? Is that cool?